Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to continue with pre camp curriculum and we're learning some debugging uh, tricks in JavaScript. Okay, so let's get started right away with the exercises. I'm just going to the first lesson. Okay, so using the JavaScript console to check the value of a variable. Okay, so the console.log method, which prints the output of what's within the parentheses. That's pretty useful. Let's try this. So let's just print a con uh, use a console log to print the value of variable A. Let's do it here. Console.log A. And here it is printing the value of A. Let's, let's, okay. Now, um, understanding the difference between the freecode camp and browser console, of course. So, uh, so far we have used the freecode camp console, but you can also check it out in the browser console. So the free code camp com console will print your console.log statements a short time after the editor detects a change in the script as well as during testing. Okay, the, this console is cleared before the tests are run and to avoid spam only prints the logs during the first test. So let's uh, use the console log to log the output variable and then use console clear. Okay. Let's use this console dot log Okay. And then we need to run the test. So we can use let's do the console clear. Okay. So we can use the console clear to clear the screen. This is better if you try it on your uh, browser console. We can use the type of to check the type of variable. So this is very useful. So we can check the data structure or type of a variable. Let's see. We need to add a console.log statement to check the type of each of the two variables 7 and 3 in the code. Okay. We can do this like this console.log type of 7 and do the same for 3 as you can see uh, 7 is a number and 3 is a string okay now how to uh, catching misspelled variables and function names so, uh, console log and type of, okay. Okay. So, this is a, uh, an issue we have to take a look at the spelling. So, we need to fix the two spelling errors in the code. Networking capital. Okay, so one is that the name of this variable is wrong. And payable, let's see. This one also was also written wrong. Okay, perfect. Always have to check for misspellings. Unclosed parentheses, brackets, braces, and quotes. You should always remember to close the parentheses. Sometimes JavaScript will tell you, you see this uh, red underscore. 
here we need to close the brackets hmm. and there's something missing two pair of errors you sh uh. The a missing piece of the ah we need to fix the missing piece of the reduce method okay as you can see so I think we need this these are the, these are the arguments to the function let's. Just remove this. Wait. So I think this should do it. So the the parentheses was missing here. The paren. Okay. Perfect. Now catching mixed usage of single and double quotes. Okay, in JavaScript you can use both single and double quotes. But if you start with a single quotes, you need to end with single quotes. And if you start with double quotes, you need, you need to end with double quotes. So we have an error here. So we need to fix the string. So it either uses different quotes for the href value or escape the existing ones. Keep the double quotes mark around the entire string. So we need to keep these double quotes. And we need to... Uh, we need to use different quotes for uh, the ID of the HTML element here. So I'm using single quotes instead of double. And that should do it. Okay, great. Now, catching use uh, of assignment operator instead of equality operator. Oh, this is a very common one. So when you use uh, just one equals, it means that you are assigning a value. But if you use two or three, in JavaScript, it means you um, are checking, you, you are you are making a Boolean expression to check for equality. Okay, we need to fix the condition so the program runs the right branch, and the appropriate value is assigned to result. So in here, we need two equals. Okay, and. Yeah, so only inside in the if condition we need a boolean expression for which we need two equal operators. The rest are assignment. Okay. Now catching missing open and closing parentheses after a function call. Okay, we need to fix the code so that the variable result is set to the value return from calling the function get9. Okay, so to call a function, we need to open and close parentheses. Since we have no, this uh, function doesn't accept any arguments, we can leave this empty. Okay. Now, catching arguments passed in the wrong order when calling a function. This is another mistake which can happen frequently in uh, dynamic languages like JavaScript or Python. Okay, so uh, for the function accepts the base first and then the exponent. So let's change the order here, base and exponent. Okay, catch off by one errors when using indexing. Okay. Okay, so when you are, we need to fix the two indexing errors in the following function so that all the numbers one through five are printed to the console. Let's see. Here we have count to five. First five is a string. One, two, three, four, five. There's the length with the length of the first five. Okay, and then we are console logging. Uh, first five i. So in this case, we are we are start, starting to count from one, but of course um, to access the first element in a string, you start from index zero. 
So we need to fix this right here. Make this zero and this less than than. Okay, let's run this. That does it. Okay, we need to reinitialize variables inside the loop. So sometimes when it's necessary to save information like increment counters or reset variables within a loop. Potential issue is when variable either should be reinitialized and aren't or, or and aren't or vice versa. So if you accidentally reset the variable being used for the terminal condition causing an infinite loop. Okay. We can use console log to uncover buggy behavior to check if we have reset that variable. So the function uh, is supposed to create a two-dimensional array with m rows and n columns of zeros. Unfortunately, it's not producing the expected output because the row variable isn't being reinitialized, set back to an empty array in the outer loop. Fix the code so that it returns the correct 3 by 2 array of zeros, which is like this. Okay. So, here we have uh, an empty array and an empty row. So we are declaring the row right here, but instead we should be doing it inside the first loop, the uh, outer loop. Okay, let's try to move this right here. So in every iteration of this for loop, this is reset to an empty row. And this one seems to do the trick. Let's see. Yeah, that does it. And how to prevent infinite loops with a valid terminal condition. So this is the last one for this topic. Uh, so there is an example of an infinite loop. Okay, so this one, function loop, well, true, since uh, this will always be true, and we don't have a, we don't reach the terminal condition, this will go on forever. So what we have to do in our exercise, my function uh, contains an infinite loop because terminal condition i different from 4 will never evaluate false and break the looping. Okay, so minus... Uh, I will increment by 2 each pass and jump right over 4 since i is odd to start. Fix the comparison operator in the terminal condition so that so the loop only runs for i uh, less than or equal to 4. So in this case we started i uh, to 1 and we uh, increment by 2 so we will jump over 4, we'll, it will go 1, 3, 5 so this terminal condition will never be reached, so we, the loop will go on forever. The only way to, to fix this is to do something like this. And let's run this. Okay, that's it. Okay, guys, so this was a, a shorter section than the previous ones. But this is very important. It's important to know uh, how to debug your JavaScript code. Okay, um, thank you for watching. In the next one, I will continue with the basic data structure challenges in JavaScript. Uh, as always, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.